Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Lee, and all of these events uh, uh, coordinator to invite me. Uh, it was a great pleasure to have a contact again with all of you. And uh, my my lecture today is about VR applied research in in medical. And to start this presentation, I would like to briefly introduce myself. So as Professor Lee uh, mentioned before, so I originally from Indonesia, but I got my master and PhD from Tungso de Akio. So I have really long history with Tungso and Busan. That's why I'm super happy to involve in this event. This is my picture with Professor Lee. And after I finished my PhD, <laughs> uh, I went to Germany for my first postdoc. Uh, and uh, I did my postdoc at Fraunhofer uh, Institute in, in, uh, in Germany. And then I did my second postdoc in Canada. I lived there for about two years. And this is actually where uh, the first time I started working with medical uh, direction. So my supervisor, Professor Kristen Jacob, he has joined, uh, joined, uh, joined, what is it? Joined, uh, joined appointment with computer science and, and, and school of medicine. So th this is uh, when everything started, uh, when I started to pivot my research to medical related uh, topics. And currently I'm working at University of Florida as a, as a professor and uh, for your information, UF is uh, currently top five uh, research public uh, university, and this is our mascot, uh, Gator. We call we, uh, we call this guy uh, Gator, and uh, UF is uh, we we really have like an entrepreneurial uh, spirit uh, together with our academic uh, activities, and one of our research uh, product that come up as a Huge, huge success in the commercial uh, area is Gatorade. So this is this is Gator, and we have the drink, and we brand it as a Gator Eight Gatorade. And this is my research interest: is uh, XR applied research for non-gaming and entertainment. Not because I don't like gaming, but uh, I I see something that not related with gaming and entertainment is more uh, is have uh, is having more uh, let's say scientific value. So immersive tech in uh, and 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 medical direction. So after uh, my journey, my research discovery, I realized that actually um, immersive technology and, and and medical direction it can branch again in 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 couple directions. The first one is education, and then visualization, simulation, telemedicine, and still a lot of branches uh, possible in the future. And for education itself, it turns out that we can actually branch it uh, again, one for the student and the other for the practitioner. Because if you talk about a uh, medical uh, field, there are a lot of people who already work in, in hospital, in clinics. They already finished their uh, formal education, but they still need somehow uh, some uh, virtual simulation. And this is where VR can come in, uh, and give uh, benefit for them. And for education, the first project that I want to show you is, we call it HARP with uh, uppercase A and R. So this is means uh, augmented reality project. So this project is as, actually is pretty simple. So basically we just use the mobile phone and then we open the camera, we shoot to the page, the conventional book, and then we can, we can show the uh, three-dimensional data of the heart or whatever uh, human organ. It's pretty simple, straightforward for us, but whenever I show it to the School of Medicine, it never failed to impress all of the professors and students. So this is pretty much how it looks. I know for if you already work in this field, this is super basic, super simple, but once again, uh, the professor in, in School of Medicine always impress because they think that with the conventional book, they actually lost like the volume, uh, the, the volume uh, aspect of the of the teaching and learning activities, and like that, and we also have initiative to use AR for this purpose. So if you show it to the plastic dummy, so in the school of medicine, they have a lot of this plastic dummy, 
and then if you shoot it with your phone and then we can augment it with some information so meaning that the student can learn about this plastic dummy even though there is no instructor they can just pull up the phone shoot it to the object and then it can augment with some information and this is the project that um, long time before hololens uh, released by microsoft this is one of the hottest device in uh, in augmented reality field we call it uh, they call it meta space glasses so basically this is the um, augmented reality space uh, glasses and they have the uh, the uh, special camera this is similar like kinect that can detect your hand and then you can do the hand gesture and uh, so basically the the ar will be visualized in here but this camera will 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 integrate the hand gesture interaction so this is the the screen uh, recording from inside the headset so imagine that if you have the floating hud in front of you and you can start to uh, in, uh, interact with your hand just this is very similar with if you love to watch a science fiction movie like Iron Man and the others. So this is the, the menu. You can click with the hand and then we have the slider. And then once you play around with the slider, the human anatomy will expand. And then we can pick which uh, human system you want, to, uh, you want to learn. For example, like this, we can uh, put it on the table and with, with the hand gesture, we can scale it up, scale it down. And then uh, this is also what to show the user that we can actually give the superhuman uh, ability with X-ray vision. And this is also inspired by the science fiction movie where if you can use the hand gesture to expand the uh, internal organ and then put it back. And then if, if necessary, you can grab one of it with your hand directly. And it was pretty cool until HoloLens came and uh, I think nobody talk about this device anymore. The other education, this is not exactly medicine, but uh, this is actually related with uh, dental. So in this project, we actually combine a lot of stuff, for example, like reputation, spatial experience. And this is actually, this project was started in 2019. And at that time, we just accidentally create our own metaverse uh, experience for dental uh, contacts. And this is actually the progress at the time. So we can uh, immerse two VR users from different, from different space, and then they can interact uh, one to each other. So this is the view from user A. Let's say this is from the instructor headset. So they can see the student. This is the other VR users. And they can they can come from anywhere. For, for example, like instructor in Florida, the the student in uh, South Korea. So as long as they put the headset, they can interact at the same time. And as you can see, as long as the internet connection pretty stable, the latency is pretty pretty low. And this is the action where student and instructor can have a real time interaction. And then this project actually was inspired after COVID. So once COVID happened uh, in the United States, uh, the government decided to lock down everything, including school, no more class, no more lab. And uh, this is how we uh, answered that challenge that we can actually utilize the metaphors to run the lab session, even though uh, we should stay at home or stay in your dorm room. And uh, in, the, in the medical school, I learned that the, the doctor is not only learning about the, uh, the tangible skill, the hands-on skill, but they also learn how to communicate with the patient. They need to deliver the bad news or good news to the patient later. They need to, to be able to communicate the, the, the let's say, the, the, the health investigation and so on. So that's why the doctor not only need to learn about the hands-on skill, but they also need to learn uh, to, to improve their communication skills. So traditionally, they're gonna call the standard desk patient. That's actually the paid actor, come to the school, give the script, and they, the, the student can start uh, training their communication skill. But then again, because of the COVID lab school, they cannot call the actor. So we decided how about if we uh, create the virtual standard desk patient, 
and uh, meaning that the, the student can communicate with the virtual patient. And then we also implement a, a very basic AI, the natural language processing. We use the IBM Watson uh, AI SDK to facilitate the verbal communication between user and uh, the patient. And this is the video. I want to make sure it's not gonna be too loud for all of you. This is the recording from the device. We use the markerless AR, so meaning we don't need the printed marker. That's the patient. And this is where... Uh... Good morning, Mr. Andrews. Is it? I've been coming here for two years and I still don't have proper teeth. We will have time to discuss that. Let's start with updating your medical history. I will now take your blood pressure. Why? I'm fine. I don't want you to take my blood pressure. I'm sorry, but this is the clinic's protocol. Ugh, okay, fine. Good morning, Mr. Andrews. Is it? I've been coming here for two years and I still don't have proper teeth. So this is the team. So we work with one of the Indonesian uh, professor work in Chicago. So a couple interesting thing from this project is actually the, we use AR. And for this AR, we use uh, Google, Google AR Core. Maybe you can learn from Professor Lee or the other instructor how to use the Google AR Core. So this is like the, the SDK from Google so that you can track the room and then you can place uh, something uh, uh, in, in the middle of the room. And then the critical part from this project, actually the AI enhanced the seamless conversation. So we use IBM Watson, natural language processing. This is where we can actually train the AI so that the AI can, 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 uh, can, uh, can understand the uh, user response and can give the correct answer. And let's see, the other interesting part is we actually uh, implement the adaptive storytelling. So that's why in here, because this is the virtual simulation, we, we really want to, uh, to take advantage of this uh, uh, virtual simulation. That's why in here, we let the student pick scenario and each uh, answer or each uh, question can lead to the different uh, different uh, uh, story, end of story. So we, this is their chance to explore couple uh, couple options there. And then uh, the other is uh, visualization. So AR and VR also start to uh, get explored as a visualization. For example, like for if, if, if you are working with the oncologist, they start to learn, uh, they want to also apply AR or VR to help their work. And one of the project that I think pretty, pretty fit with this uh, section is our project named HoloCell. So uh, once we get the HoloLens one, we create this uh, uh, holographic learning tool to teach about eukaryotic cell. So this is HoloLens 1. At that time, it was like one of the hottest uh, augmented reality headset at the time. Of course, I know uh, nobody talk about HoloLens 1 anymore because we already... So this is the illustration. So we can put the holographic uh, eukaryotic cell in the middle of room. And this is actually... Uh, the real view is just an empty room, but once you put the headset, you can see the huge... Uh, <coughs> eukaryotic cell holographic and photometric uh, 3D shape like this. And then
So this is the the point of view from the headset because this is HoloLens. You can use the uh, hand gesture provided by the SDK, and of course you can you can also use the voice gesture interaction. Okay, so let's go to start, and then you can record. You can you can rotate. All right, the, the next section is about uh, simulation. So uh, this is the interesting project when I arrived in Canada. So they have what they call giant walkthrough brain. So this is actually the idea from one of the scientists back in 1970. He want to create a seven floor building shaped like a brain. And then the user can come into that building and explore. The idea is based on the research. Um, the, the, the study say that the human has pretty good sense of space. That's why if you go to, let's say, uh, overseas, you rent a car, the driver, whoever drive usually can, uh, can remember all of the spot uh, much better than the other passenger. Because once you drive, you have, you, your sense of space start, uh, start uh, working with your, uh, with, with your brain. That's why you can remember all of the spot, all of the road, uh, much faster than the other passenger. So that's the basic idea. That's why you want to uh, build this one so that the user can go into the building and from there can learn in which part of building we process the color, in which part of the building, uh, uh, no, for which part of the brain we actually process the words uh, and so on and so forth. But of course, nobody, uh, nobody really want to invest their money into this idea and our lab decided to build the, uh, the, the virtual version. And uh, the, it's, it's gonna look like this. They have the pathway like so, they have the stairs so that the users can go up. And then there is a, a small elevator on uh, two sides. And then we, uh, at that time we have the VR cave uh, for, if you don't know what is a VR cave, the setup pretty much look like this. They have one, two, three, three walls and one floor, and it has a lot of infrared uh, sensor in here. And behind each wall, there, uh, there is like a HD projector. It's very expensive setup. And then uh, the user can just uh, stand up in the middle of here and uh, he or she, the, the, the user will feel uh, immersed with the, with, the, with the brain building. And the other is, uh, this is the project that we work with the uh, anatomy professor in Canada. So basically, he, he said to us that um, to run the anatomy lab is quite expensive uh, because let's say the, the, cloth, uh, the, the school need to spend like 10,000 US dollar only for, for cloth for the student. And then um, they, uh, he also has like complained that in, in, in his school, the, he, he can only put like five or six cadaver in, in, in one lab. Meanwhile, he actually has like 100 or 200 students in one, one, one uh, academic year. So the waiting line is very long. The, the student need to wait weeks or months before he or she can enter that lab and working with the cadaver. That's why uh, he think that the virtual cadaver can probably uh, solve that, prob uh, that that issue. So this is the uh, the project that we come up with uh, with Hololens. Uh, for this project, we try to mimic the activities inside the human anatomy lab, where um, the student can actually lay this. Virtual, uh, virtual human. So we, we start with uh, scanning the room, and then from there we can place this uh, virtual cadaver on the table. So we have actually quite similar experience uh, between this uh, application and the real uh, anatomy lab. And then from here, this is not the interesting part, but the interesting part actually uh this this is something that even the real cadaver cannot uh cannot cannot accommodate let's say let's see if i can oh no so actually we 
actually in this project we can switch from several human system from muscular to nerve to uh, to internal organ to skeleton in one in one packet so that they can switch uh, depends on which which uh, human anatomy they want to learn maybe i need to change the video later uh, this is the other uh, simulation that we create. So uh, using the same 3D model, the first one is for teaching the anatomy, but for this project, we actually can use it to, uh, to simulate how to do the virtual dissection. So basically you put the headset, you go inside this room, and then from there, uh, you have two controller, right? In, in, in a VR headset, uh, it, it come up with two controller. And then we, using that controller, we can actually grab a lot of stuff. And from there, we can start to simulate how to do the dissection uh, program. Something like that. But this is not, uh, not the latest video, so I'm just going to skip it. But from this, from this project, we learned that uh, it's the current VR controller actually miss one of the critical parts for medical education, which is the, the haptic feedback. Because uh, it just use the controller, you cannot really feel when we slice the, let's say the human skin, and then go into the muscular level until you touch the, phone, uh, the, the bone, you cannot feel anything. That's why we have the initiative to expand this project and then in this project, we decided to try the haptic glove. And then this haptic glove actually have a vibration sensor and it gives you the vibration in six spots. One is in the, in the middle of your palm and five in your, on your fingertip point. So um, this is where we start to combine the haptic uh, uh, feedback with VR and it's not perfect, but at least we start to, uh, to, to combine these two uh, devices. Medical training can be expensive and inaccessible. For this project, we explore the field of VR medical dentist training for those who are learning to be professional dentists. Usually, this is a training that happens in person and requires a lot of resources such as time, money, actors, and the need to be physically present. This may not be possible due to financial reasons, disabilities, or even pandemics. One solution could be a class over Zoom or a YouTube tutorial. However, when learning technical tools, the lack of immersion with these tools is an issue as it does not allow for realistic practice. We created Dentist VR, a virtual reality application which consists of a virtual dentist office where the users, student dentists in this case, are tasked with filling out cavities on virtual teeth. The main issue with virtual training in this scenario is that there is no haptic reception. The inability to feel touch in virtual immersive environments is detrimental to the training because of the lack of realism. In order to create an experience as close to real life as possible, the haptic feedback from the drill is essential to teach the users the technicalities of drilling into a tooth as well as create immersion. In the application, we use Bebop haptic gloves which produce a vibrating reaction. The feedback received varies with the depth and direction of the drilling. This increases the accuracy of the usability and teaches the user about the technical skills of filling cavities. This also promotes accessibility to VR patient training overall. In order to increase the accessibility and accuracy of VR medical training, in the future we see this as an educational tool that can be used by dentists anywhere. Okay, so that's how we combine haptic and virtual reality. And the last one is about telemedicine. <clears throat> this is gonna be pretty big as well, especially after we have the metaverse. The idea is we want to run, let's say the therapeutic uh, session, but everything do in the, in the virtual world. And uh, for this project, we have what we call exhibit. Actually, uh, this is what, uh, stands for XR Enhanced CBIT for uh, tick patient. So if you don't know what is tick patient, so that's actually uh, one of the brain disorder where actually the patient, if they 
if they find some trigger, they start to show some gesture, for example, like fist, fist sticks or a shoulder or a hand or sometimes voice. And each patient have a, a different trigger. So for example, like some patient uh, cannot stand the bright room. Some patient cannot stand the pressure of uh, public speaking in front of in front of friend in front in front of the other stranger, and uh, the idea is we want to create uh, the simulation so that between the uh, therapist and the patient can meet in the virtual reality uh, room and they can uh, they can run uh, run the session uh, inside the VR room. So this is the the project that we work with. Uh, the the neurological uh, department in UF. So in this in this section, we use the museum as a virtual room because based on the research, museum also give a lot of problem for the tick patient because it's bright, meet a lot of patients, it's very quiet sometimes. So that kind of situation can really uh, trigger the 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 tick behavior. So this is uh, this is the early prototype that we built at the time and we try to install it in real time in the in the hospital and this is where two users with two different headsets meet in the meet inside the virtual room and they can communicate they can run the <coughs> they can run the 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 session there and that's pretty much my last uh, presentation Thank you so much. If you have any question or anything, feel free to reach me at marcus.santoso at Thank you. Thank you for presentation. Is there any question? So the Digital World Institute is located in the same university, in your university? Yeah. So digital is like a department in, 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 UF, in UF. Ah, department. Yeah, it's a, it's a department. Okay, okay. So mm -hmm. what is your current project? My current project mostly with uh, dental uh, direction. Mm -hmm. So for example, like we, we already work with cloth, even though mm -hmm. we, we, we are pretty happy, but we we still miss a lot of important points from, from the dental education. For example, like the resistance, because the, with, with the glove, they can sense the vibration, but they cannot feel the, the, the texture of the teeth, especially if they drill the teeth, how hard they need to push, uh, still miss a lot of like a resistance point. That's why right now I'm, uh, we, we purchased the haptic pen. That's why we can, we can recreate, the, recreate that, uh, the, that project and with a more realistic uh, touch sensation for the for the student. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so what is your some teaching subject? Teaching subject for uh, for the undergrad class, I teach uh, game programming, Unity programming, mm. and then I also teach RVR. For my for the for the graduate course, I mostly use the project-based class. So I have the research collaborator. We bring the, like a real world uh, problem. And then we, in one semester, we build the, the solution for, for, for the collaborator. Mm -hmm. So the master is my MIDAS program? MIDAS? Yeah, MIDAS program. MIDAS program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about the student? How many the, per year? So for the master program, currently we have like 10 students. We have 10 students. 10 students. Yeah, 10 students. Mm. Yeah, 10. So how many professors involved? Professor, I think we have like six. Six? Yeah, six. Mm. Mm. So you have to every year one or two students. Yeah, uh, about, about, about that one. So is there some collaborate uh, another culture? Another, you mean uh, university? Uh, uh, yeah, last time that you offered mm -hmm. uh, some the collaboration with the MIDAS program. Uh, yeah, of course we 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 open to to any kind of collaboration. So mm -hmm. if if Tongso they want to 
or II want to collaborate, of course, we I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very happy to open the co uh, collaboration. Okay, okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any question? Okay, so All right. please share your material to sure. students. Okay. okay, I will send it to you. Okay, thank you. Thank Good you, night. Professor Lee. Good night. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs>